So in this video, I just wanted to kind of go over high-level overview of the various concepts within Webpack and also get us uh, an introduction into their documentation. So if you come to the webpack.js.org website, uh, this is obviously the website for Webpack, if you click on documentation, the first thing it's going to bring you to is this section on concepts. Uh, right here on the left-hand side, you can see the breakout of all the things we're going to be talking about. So at a high level, there's really only a handful of things you really need to understand to grasp how Webpack works. There's a concept of an entry, an output, loaders, plugins, and mode. Um, so entry is basically the file that is the entry point for Webpack. So typically, it's um, in a source folder. It's called index.js. And this is the entry point where all your other JavaScript files, all your CSS, SCS files, etc., all need to come into this single file, and then Webpack will process everything directly from that single file. The next is the output. So once you have an entry going in, once Webpack has um, processed everything and it's ran through all the loaders and everything and processed all of your various files, it then needs to know, okay, where do I output all of these bundles that I need to create? And so right here, we've got our path and our file name. And just to be clear, I'm going over these very quickly. I'm gonna go over all of this in much greater detail throughout the course and throughout the videos. This is just a high level overview before we get into that. So we've got our entry, we've got an output. So essentially Webpack, here's the file you need to look for to process everything. And then here's the output of where to process or where you're gonna output all the files you processed or here's where to put that all those bundled files. Then we have the concept of a loader, and a loader essentially is a way of telling Webpack how to process a specific file type. So out of the box, Webpack doesn't know what to do with a .css file. You need a CSS loader for that. Or in this example, um, a .txt file. So if you have a .txt file, Webpack has no idea how to handle that. You need to then use this raw loader which will then process the text file. And this is the same for JSON files, for .png, um, .jpg, for font files, anything you can imagine. Uh, you're gonna need a specific loader in order to transform and handle those specific file types. Then there's also this concept of plugins. So plugins essentially just add additional functionality to Webpack. Um, in this example, this HTML Webpack plugin, we actually use this throughout the course. Um, what this is going to do is when you uh, include it, is it's gonna automatically create a index.html file once you build everything. So that way, when you've got your CSS files, your JavaScript files and everything, when you do the production build and it outputs all your assets into like a dist folder, it will automatically create the index.html, which will then have references to all of your CSS files and your JavaScript files. So it'll include, you know, the script tags that say source equals and then, the, you know, the relative path to the JavaScript file. And the same goes for CSS or any other files. And then the final thing I want to discuss is this concept of mode. So um, Webpack, this is new as of, I believe, version 4. So this is something fairly new since the latest version or the last version. And what this does is this tells uh, Webpack the different modes and configurations that it needs to be in. So throughout the course, we're going to create a total of three Webpack configurations, but two of them are in specific modes. So we're going to create a config for exclusively for development, and then we're going to create one exclusively for production. And this is just a way to kind of flag a specific file and to tell Webpack how to handle different situations and configurations and how to build and uh, bundle files depending upon what environment you need to be in. Um, the last thing about browser compatibility, uh, I'm not too worried about that um, because we're going to be handling our JavaScript and everything with Babel. So this really isn't an issue because Babel is going to take care of all that JavaScript stuff for us. So we don't really need polyfills or anything like that. Um, so that pretty much sums it up. I just wanted to do a quick kind of overview of the concepts that we're going to be going over uh, throughout this course. And obviously in future videos, we're going to be going over each and every single one of these various concepts in greater detail.